I've done a bunch of these tree ID videos and there was always a species or two that I couldn't find or didn't get to or I couldn't group with the other ones I was doing so this time around I'm gonna try to do a species mop up. We're gonna start with a pretty important tree species. This is the black walnut. It's the most valuable commercial hardwood species that we have in New York. It's kind of rare and the reason for that is that walnut is very fussy about where it'll grow. It only likes to grow in rich loamy bottomland and here in New York that kind of land tends to get farmed so uh, you'll find walnut trees on the fringes of fields or along river banks uh, places where nobody would farm but it has the kind of soil that wal walnut wants. I've seen a lot of failed walnut plantations where they planted it on clay soil and it just couldn't take and it just couldn't thrive. Uh, so walnut is just fussy about where it can take root and grow. Walnut bark can be kind of similar to ash or tulip poplar in that it has that herringbone, interlaced diamonds. Uh, I, I've heard suggestions of how to describe this bark pattern, but none of them satisfy me that much. Um, but it can look similar to, to ash and tulip poplar. There's a few dead giveaways. Walnut trees, when they're leafed out, they have these long compound leaves. And the only thing that really resembles them is sumac. Uh, but a sumac can't achieve the size that a, that a walnut can. When the leaves are off in the winter, you'll find walnut has a much heavier twig than other kinds of trees in comparison. Now here's a single walnut compound leaf. You have a leader up the middle and pairs of leaves coming off of it. And in comparison with other trees that also have compound leaves such as ash or hickory or uh, box elder, uh, you'll have way more pairs of leaves in one compound leaf for walnut than the others. And if you notice, looking up close, you'll have pairs that are a mirror image of each other and then you'll have pairs that are kind of offset from each other where they're not quite anchored across the stem from each other. But the biggest way to see if a tree is in the walnut family is to break a twig any member of the walnut family on the inside of the twigs they'd have what's called a chambered pith you see those little lines those horizontal lines that run up the middle of the inside of the twig those are little diaphragms that seal off the hollow center so that's called a chambered pith it could be a twig it could be the, any limb, any branch, it could be the middle of the, the butt log on the tree and it will have that chambered pith inside of it. It's a common trait for a stand that's mostly walnut to have the individual tree trunks be rather far apart from each other like this. And you might have a lot of brushy cover from the waist down it'll be kind of open like this. And the reason for that is a trait of walnuts called the leliopathy. That means that they actually kill other kinds of trees from around themselves. Uh, so you'll find nothing but walnut are able to grow among them. Which is the reason why walnut is not prized as a yard tree because it's death on vegetable gardens and flower beds. Fresh cut walnut log will have sapwood that's much, much lighter than the heartwood. Uh, oftentimes, uh, guys will take walnut and steam it to bleed the pigment into that sapwood so they don't have such a contrast between the colors. Just to give you an idea of walnut's relative scarcity in New York, any given year I might sell one or two million board feet of standing timber. Of that, last year only 30,000 board feet was walnut. Large sawmills can't feed their mill that way, and a forester like me might manage woodlots that are 20, 50, or 100 acres in size. I can't make a living from a handful of trees at a time. 
But your smaller loggers and log buyers, like the Amish, they can go after individual trees that grow huge in somebody's backyard. A tree like this one might be worth several thousand dollars, but they are rare and they might be a logistical nightmare getting them out. The nut pods drop away from the tree in the form of these round green pods that look like limes, sort of. And over time, the pod turns black and it'll actually kind of dissolve away, leaving behind the brown walnut nut. Now these things are super hard, you just about have to drive over them with your car to crack them open. So I've just realized that I'm six minutes in and I've only talked about walnuts so far. I'll have to make a part two video to finish up my tree species mop up.